right then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is Zay here with Chris. We're going to review with you another movie. Jesse's Yes, so this is a uh, Netflix movie. We just decided to put it on. It has a uh, girl, Jenna Ortega, in it. It also has Martin Freeman in it. But let's get into it. This is Miller's Girl. Um, oh, God. This was from a book. This, yeah, I feel like this is better to read as a book than watch as a movie. Of course, we'll get into the rating. Twenty-one fifty-two. Yep, we'll get into the uh, we'll get into the rating much much later into it. Pretty much um, stars Jonathan stars Martin Freeman as Jonathan Miller. He is an English teacher. He is teaching um, Jenna Ortega's character Cairo Sweet, and it is unfortunately an uncomfortable watch as it is the story of Cairo falling in love with her English teacher. And as Chris has been telling you, the age difference is yeah, quite substantial here. Of the it actual actor, of the actual act of, the act of Martin and Jenna, yeah. yeah. Now for the teacher, it's still uncomfortable to watch for the teacher and the student because this is this is weird because they definitely don't look like they should be doing this on screen together. But Jonathan's friend, uh, Boris Fillmore, they're kind of like they're the teachers here. He's like a he's like a coach, but essentially it's like a they're in a really small school. They're in like a really in a, small, in a small school, town. yeah. And so Cairo's character, she's like a writer she's a fantastic writer but yeah she but pretty her much writing does get jonathan going entangled let's just say she like i said before we get to the entanglement she has her friend winnie um winnie black and they're they're like good friends and winnie's kind of like the rebellious or rambunctious one she doesn't mind getting in trouble she doesn't mind pushing the envelope but she does end up telling kyro as she's preparing for her college exam she's or her college um, entrance is trying to get into um, university. She's like, oh yeah, you're kind of boring. You know you know how college essays are, write about a difficult time in your life or write about a great achievement. This is, she couldn't think of one. You know, Kyra couldn't think of one because she's just studying. She's just trying to be the best student. She's not like involved in other things. So Winnie pushes her to try something new, which is- Losing your virginity. Yeah, losing your virginity to your, virginity to your, your teacher. Yeah, it is, uh, it's uncomfortable. Chris, how'd you feel about it? This we all know what pad ladies, you know, Tumblr girlies, you oh, know, God. all the little, you know, romances of being with your teacher. I never had that experience because all my mm -mm. teachers were racist mm -mm. and they didn't look good regardless. So, and I like love Winnie. Did. I love Winnie. I really liked her character. What'd you think about the buildup of their characters? You know, like Jonathan and Kylo. I think. Jonathan is lame. Like, you are lame. You are a failed author, and every woman around you and everybody knows it. Only your homeboy's the one sitting there laughing in your face, going about his day. Because I understand, like, what are you supposed to do? Oh, yeah, man, you're a failed author. What are you going to do? Now you're an English teacher, you know? But instead of actually setting those boundaries with Miss Cairo, Miss Jenna, what teacher is inviting you out on a weekend or maybe weekday night to go watch other like a poet it was a poet slam or something yeah it was a and poetry night and they were sitting they were sitting next to each other it, it was quite a like i said it made me feel uncomfortable because of the build-up of their characters like how I she think, slowly got to w wear him down i think she ultimately was the biggest distraction to him because he she reminded him of how great he was and so he was like, maybe she can make me better. But it was just one of those things, like his friend said, Boris literally told you, you go too far with things. Yes. And so Jonathan's character, of course, we, we learn this a little bit more about him. The movie at first tries to paint him as, like I said, the, he's just an English teacher who was an author. And um, he's dealing with writer's block, which is very understandable. Creative's block, everybody deals with it. Oh, and also point. the books that he did publish were shat on. They exactly. Not... And so, and like I said, it, it's, a, it's a good message of how to like not fall into the hole of I'm not going to make anything better. But um, his wife, Beatrice, I think she was a good, she, she was a good like antithesis, antithesis of him almost. Like she's extremely busy. She's like, I don't think we see her leave the house at all. I think she's no, in the house the entire movie. Smoke getting drunk surrounded by paperwork out. yeah um she's a much more successful author by the way yeah she much is. more successful and maybe because she seems more ambitious but she had even told her husband you know toward the end you know you're not like you are not ambitious you don't have any drive towards you you're not the man that i once married and we were these excited exhilarating authors and we wanted to get our stories out there now you're just an english teacher which you chose to be because exactly. you were too scared of failure that's exactly. what you decided to do you so only you wrote up. the uh he only wrote the one novel or he only wrote the one book and yeah. since it didn't pan out the way it needed to he gave up which you got to put something out there and it's going to get bad reviews or it's going to not be accepted but you got to keep trying and what did leah say try again 
Yeah, all you gotta do is try again. But the pacing of the film, since it's a little bit over an hour and a half, um, the first hour of it is building up towards Cairo and Jonathan's sensual encounter. Se thank you. Great way to describe it. G sensual encounter. 21, um, 52, 21. Is there anything that we really liked about the film? Um, what the main ones are a little questionable. I'll say that. But actually, let me stop. I only like Winnie, to be honest. I don't know why I just lied and said that. Because Winnie was the only one that was, like I said, normal in my eyes. She was just a hypersexual teenage girl. I mean, she had her crush and was trying it. But what I will say is that Boris and Beatrice, their relationship, which is obviously, you know, Martin Freeman's wife in the movie. Now, like I said, she was an author. She, like you had said earlier, she was always at home. But I'm sorry, ladies or gentlemen, would you feel comfortable if your best friend was sitting on your spouse's lap? Well, all cuddled up or close with, at a, a game. with their underwear on, mind you. Exactly, mind you. that was weird. Definitely, definitely felt like something could have been implied there, but it was never built upon. And it. then she's also Explained very on. drunk. She's very much so a drunk. She's a drunk. I mean, so, she explained that she, she's a drunk because she can't. She Stand can't live it, him. yeah. So that, that was a very, very touch. That was a dirty I guess those are the only scenes I would say that I enjoyed. Was that was there. Like, just their marriage and, kind of falling apart. If you apart don't right know there. one thing about Miss Jenna, she's going to make out with a woman. Just so you know. They tried to develop her as like, okay, we're going to have you be more edgy and a little bit stalkerish forward. She did, she did manipulate how she normally is. Like, she shows up early to class. Now, she shows up early to class. And, of course, she's going to start talking to him and trying to get a little bit to know more about him and then they they have this weird scene where she's like quoting his work and they're kind of getting turned on by it and then it gets like i said it's different like i said go ahead just like boris said you go too far what teacher is going to be doing all that like i said i understand i can see both of the sides but office it's like, hours because mm. you're because you're excited about this young talent you're like as a teacher you would be like you're you're so just like a coach would be excited for like a star athlete i mean imagine LeBron's naturally coach, naturally coach. gifted you're like oh who's this you yeah, know they, you they know, just like, got you're it. gonna you're gonna have a fascination toward it but you also have to realize you are first of all a authority over her and then on top of that you're seeing her outside of class hours you're seeing her on your office hours you guys are very close also you clearly cross which i really hate that they did this because i really just wanted to know but we don't know what happened in the house guys whenever she had oh yeah yeah we oh yeah let's let, yeah let's build up to that moment as it is so after the poetry night nothing happens that night they just sit close together her um, and Winnie are still plotting. Her you know, and Winnie are the... still plotting. Yeah, and by the way, Winnie is Winnie's trying to make her move on Boris, but Boris. They're both trying to lose their virginities because Winnie said, "I want to lose it to a grown man. I don't want to have a two pump chump. I want to exactly lose it to a, grown a guy man. who doesn't know what he's doing." But Boris, he knows his boundaries. He plays around with it, which is bad, by the way. He's still like you Very still report this to HR. Very You're still engaged in sexual conversation with a minor and a student. But at least to be fair to Boris, Boris was did get Winnie's number due to the it, now this is still inappropriate because no teacher should have your phone number um at all they should only have your parents number mm -hmm. in regards if they're speaking about you who was still a minor a child <laughs> but he did get her number because I believe Cairo had told um him and Martin anyway Cairo was just trying to get Boris to sell his muffins because they're so good and then so she goes Winnie can help you because you know she's trying to she's trying to set her girl up she's setting her girl exactly. up for the law so she's just like hey yeah. She's like, hey, Winnie is good at, like, you know, designs and stuff. Like, she would be able to help you, and that would be good for her college and stuff. Like, or her, not college essays, but, like, you know, college, um, what's it called? Like, application. Admission, just yeah. admission, application, yeah. So Make it look she, like she does more than just study. This is when we see Winnie really, really going nuts. But anyways, before we get to them in the classroom and how they get each other's cell phones. Yeah, we have to, we have to build up the fact of how she, like, wore him down. So after the poetry night, we move on to them getting... They just get like pretty much what that introduced was uh, Jonathan was smoking and Cairo takes advantage of that and she's like, oh, let me show smoke. And so she ends up she ends up leaving her phone. She leaves her phone because she needs an excuse to see or for him to see her. And he ends up messaging her like because Winnie know. was trying to take Boris's phone, which is exactly what ended up happening. Because he ends up at Boris and does end up asking, oh yeah, because oh we mm -hmm. have to we have to say this because Jonathan was trying to get his freak on with his wife. Yes. Which is the part where I feel kind of bad for Jonathan. Like, Jonathan and Beatrice, they're supposed to be going. She's like, hey, like, I want us to have a little sexy getaway. She's exactly. like, I want us to have a sexy getaway. 
And literally, he gets back there, gets cucked, because her ass is still what? Working. Working. Working, working, working. And she's like, oh, I'll be done soon. Hours pass. And then here comes Jenna. Hey, you got my phone. Phone. Right on time. Mm, right got, on time. And also, did Boris, I think Boris ended up telling Jenna, I mean, Boris ended up telling Cairo that she, that he was about, yeah, he did. He, he was like, he's like, oh, he's gone already. She goes, hey, because... Yep, because literally Cairo ends up saying to Boris, Jenna ends up asking um, Boris, hey, where's um, Mr. Miller? And he goes, oh, he's going like, you know, to a getaway with his wife or whatever yep. he says. And then they I don't feel end like, up going. And then yeah. I feel like Cairo in her mind, that, that is smart of her because I didn't even think of her plotting. I literally thought it was an accident. I thought Winnie kind of planted the phones because Winnie was trying to take Boris's phone because, you know, like I said, she's trying to get her freak a leak on. And I thought. Freak a leak. I thought that's what kind of, you know, Cairo was, I thought Winnie had kind of did both of their phones, but I guess not. Mm. And so that's whenever, you know, Martin gets that call from Miss And Jenna. so it is the turning point in the film where is he actually going to act on it? Is he actually going to, you know, go forward with it? He he does. He leaves. We don't know what life. happens. We don't know what happened. We do know one thing happens. He he comes all the way to her house to bring her her phone. He doesn't go. He doesn't from our from this scene. He doesn't go inside the house, but he tells her to come here, and she ends up stepping out into the rain, and they kiss, and it is uh, um, well, quite awkward. I, at the end of the day, very awkward to see. He already, as that man, you know what you know as a grown ass adult what you're doing because first of all, I would have been like, been oh, sorry, sorry, I have your phone. I will give it to you on Monday or. Whatever day it is, I will give it to you then. If you need it right immediately, you drop it now, off the door and I will leave. leave it in my mailbox. You can, but also, no, because I don't want you to know where I live. Like, there's, or or I'll give it to, I'll leave it here and Boris will give it to you, you know, if you need it right away, whatever. But so, that's what you would do. And we know what Jenna was trying to do. She was trying to get her some Miller. No, but I'm talking about him. I'm talking about Jonathan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's like Jonathan. But he if was trying I, to get her some Cairo. He, um. He's trying to get sweet with it. Um, anyway, he, he, so, but he ends up like, it was just, and first, and also another thing, when she's coming out, why is she in this gown? She got her makeup on, she got her hair done. She Sir, knows. immediately you should have ran the fuck away. You exactly. should have been like, oh, I just shit myself. Yeah. He gives her the final assignment oh, early. Oh, he gives her, oh, he so gives her the again, final, so treatment. he gives her the final assignment early and she ends up writing about their relationship in mm -hmm. a fictional way. Like, but it's not fictional. It's, it's not fictional because she brings it. Because he says, write about your favorite author. But the author she chooses is a very sexual fantasy yep. dark type of person mm -hmm. and so she writes about their basic love story but in a very sexually detailed yeah. way and he ends up um and of course you know what's sickening and he ends up busting he ends up, a nut. yeah he ends up he ends up busting, busting one to it yeah nut. and that's after his and that's after his wife was not available his wife ends up you know she kind of like not she not teases him but she uses that as like a reason to kind of get up on him and close and whatnot for a moment but it does later make on. him later on but this does come to a um boiling point of what he was thinking in that moment which was he's reading it and it is the most uncomfortable scene i've probably ever seen this is this is wednesday y'all this is jenna ortega playing wednesday Jenna's getting a bent over on a bed in a gown nothing it's not like a sex scene but she is doing this weird stuff She's getting bent over by Talos. Like, this is our nigga Talos from... He's a scroll. That's crazy. Like, if you would have told me at the beginning of this year that these two actors would be doing anything remotely sexual close, I would have said no. Them playing daughter and dad? Sure. You know? Um, not love interest. It was very uncomfortable to see. I'm glad that it only happened for a couple of seconds, really, or at least a minute at most. But after that, I was like, oh my God, this is just... This is a rough watch just because of how weird it is but like it's uncomfortable that's the theme of this but yeah that ends up happening and uh he is just torn apart for the second half of the movie as his life crumbles because he is an author and there's layers but uh go that's, ahead, that's why also i feel like though i don't think they did anything i think like he's fantasizing all of those things that we saw i don't that's why the kiss was the most to happen but that's why I, we don't even know if i don't know what truly happened i really don't know what happened because I feel like she wrote that story as a love story, but we don't know if it's actually true. Like if that's actually what occurred that day, because we never saw them in the house. We, I was hoping at the end we would have like a, a walkthrough of maybe what happened, just so I could know. But it's like that never happens, and I feel like a lot of the times they were showing us in the house was when he was reading the story. So it's like, did that actually happen, or was it more so like? 
just a fantasy because that's yeah. who she was. That's who she was writing about. Someone who has dark fantasies. Tell so, us your thoughts. Obviously, I think it's more real because of the ending. Of course, kind of how things wrap up. Um, it is like I said. It was rough in that moment. There are layers to what you were saying earlier with his character. I think Jonathan's. It really is like let's just take let's just tear down Jonathan because he is talked down to by Cairo as like you're this failed author who got his you know who got himself excited off of one person who actually who you know gave, gave you, you yourself. or gave you attention gave yeah. you attention really it, it could have been good or bad at the end of the day somebody gave you attention they were quoting your work your wife is also telling you this um they're telling you, you don't have any ambition and of course um ironically all of this cures him of his own writer's block because he has a story to tell it's based off of what he had just been through but it, it's it's layered because it's like you're feeding into this girl because of not just because of the sexual aspect of wow what she can give me as a benefit but also you're doing something that's devious which you yourself have come across as this nice squeaky it's clean exciting, yeah. it's exciting for you because you're not known for being that bad boy i'm gonna try something new anyways and, and this really smart attractive young lady is interested in me and she actually is interested in me and my work and like who i am and weirdly enough you're attracted to what you see in her which is the thing you don't have which is the ambition to write mm -hmm. she has the youth and ambition to write little do you know you're just older but you have the ambition to write still you just haven't found it you're clouded you're too doubtful of all the things so when this younger person who reminds you a little bit of how you used to write gives you the littlest bit of attention you chomp at it and that's what breaks you to you know get excited off of an essay from one of your students which is just crazy it's just weird it, it's but yeah one thing about what i was just saying about like how we never got to see an actual like timeline of him actually in the house or returning a cell phone he does get in trouble because you know cairo gets upset cairo is like oh because he basically ends up cutting it off he's just like no because after he jacks off he oh Post nut clarity. I'm dead. Post nut clarity. I'm dead. He goes, what the fuck did I just do? What am I doing? Now, granted, he did tell his wife right away. So it's not like he was hiding or like, you know, who knows if he had actually cheated on her or not. Because at this point, I feel like your wife probably has been cheating on you anyway. But I don't know. She was not leaving point. that house. But maybe maybe it's just a boys. But go um, ahead. It ends up, like I said, she gets upset. And so now we get to go into our, our you know, our Jenna Ortega, let's be honest, scene. Um, before we get to how upset she really was. So now, you know, Winnie's like, Winnie sees Cairo's going all over the place. Cairo is crashing the fuck out. Cairo is <laughs> definitely crashing um, out. Cairo is pissed. And so remember, they have Boris's number, right? Boris ends up or they end up texting Boris. And then Jenna's like, why don't we send him something? They start taking mm -hmm. their tops off, never, never naked though. Videos and then they of them start kissing, yeah. Hardcore making out, y'all. Crazy. Like I said, if Jenna's gonna do one thing, she's gonna make out with the girl. And they started making out, and then Winnie, you, Winnie is, Winnie is bisexual. Winnie did say she likes women and men. Yep. And so Winnie, I could tell Winnie was into it. Winnie was like, she was forgetting like, about I'm, boys. She, she said, was like, oh, I like, I like Miss Cairo, but then Cairo. Pulls her hair back and it's like, send it. Once again, crashing out. Cairo yep. is crashing out. Cairo is upset. She's not fucking with it. And Boris literally ends up, I think, now we don't even know how he responded to the video, but he did say go to bed. Because I think they sent it after he had said go to bed. Because they were like, oh, I forgot what they were messaging him. But they were trying to be sneaky and like I said, be yeah. a little freakily. But you can tell Winnie isn't really into it that much. She's like, this is kind of boring now. Like, we're not going to lose it to them. And this is such a joke. Yep. Cairo is not. Cairo was like, no, I could have really actually fucked my man. So she ends up just disappearing, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Cairo inevitably just starts disappearing because she's like, Martin don't want to, or Jonathan don't want to fuck with me no more, Mr. Miller. And so now she's thinking she's plotting. She is plotting yep. on what she's going to do. She's like, because at the end of the day, nigga, you never going to win. Because at the end of the day, you initiate all of this. You initiated everything you knew with what Cairo. you were doing the entire time. And it's just like, and you knew that this young girl was impressionable, was naive, lacked maturity enough to handle a real grown relationship. Um, she ends up, I think, dropping a note to the principal or someone and lets yeah. them know, like, she hey. She snitches, essentially. She basically just ends up talking about the assignment. Hey, he was upset about my assignment. 
And yeah. basically, like I said, she's going to fuck up his name real quick. Yep. And she agrees to testify at, this, at the school board meeting against him. And, um, of course, we don't really know how it... You don't really get, like, the full conclusion of Miller's story, but you know that he gets over his writer's block, and you know that Cairo gets what she wants, which was her greatest achievement ever, which was that was the prompt of the college essay. So she got it. She wanted to... You know, she has that, you know, not just the fuel, but she has, like, that actual fire in her to write what she needed, which is funny because it's like she naturally has her own ambition to write, but she didn't have anything outside to I push her. The end of the day, do you feel like Cairo was wrong in her and her? All of this was wrong. This movie should have never okay, been made. But besides the movie, I'm talking about Cairo, the characters okay. were in the movie. Do you feel like Cairo was wrong for what she did? It's still both of their fault. They're still both responsible for what was going on. Like you will not we can't act like Cairo wasn't you were still plotting. If I didn't see any of the plotting or putting herself out there for him, then yeah. But it is I'm I'm not gonna sit there and be like, Oh, it's it's eighty percent on him and twenty percent on her. Like he did mess up. Like Milo, you know what I you're doing like by talking. I'm not gonna give percentages. I'm gonna say you both would you both were dancing. Takes two to tango, y'all would definitely both But one of dancing. them is a young, impressionable high school student and one of them is a grown ass man yes. with a wife. And when he showed up with that phone, she did come out that house looking that way, like in the gown and with and with the outfit, and she did ask him first you come here and then he said no you come here but so. once again why are you there exactly yeah like i said hey at the end of the day don't do this um personally this is my soliloquy on this hollywood i know we're trying to do these different things with different storylines um but let's please stop doing the student teacher thing like let's because it's we've so seen bad we've seen it way too many life. times like there's so, every single story honestly, it's happened way too many times yeah, in real life in honestly, news, it's actually picked I mean, up anytime you type in teacher teacher student affair with women and women women and little boys boys and or like men and little girls exactly. like it's just it's just so on and it's like as young as like i think the youngest i saw was like a i don't know how old the teacher was but the student was nine hey, hey yo what the fuck That's nine crazy. years old um, talking about they love, like, I love you. I can't wait for you to get older. Weird. Just absolutely disgusting. Y'all, the teachers, let them be teachers. Th this is when you have to look at people and be like, okay, you have a title, you have authority. That's what I'm going to let you have until I'm out of this school and I don't have to see you ever again. You're not, you're not in school to be dating your teachers. You're in and school to be learning. I, I know that makes us sound old as hell and trust as we are but don't be going to school trying to think that you can have this exciting lifestyle and oh that, that's another thing i want to say this was a product of peer pressure because jenna didn't um wake up Cairo didn't wake up thinking you know i'm gonna just mess around with my teacher she was pushed into it because she felt like oh i'm not that exciting because of the yale wants me to put my greatest achievement and i can't think of one you're a talented student you did not have you had a friend who was thinking of it a different way like let me try to you know be a little bit toxic and spice things up she pushed herself of course she did a lot of it on her own afterwards but it is a peer pressure film of not feeling like you're as exciting enough because you're just studying or you want to be a really good student. Sometimes that's more than enough. Try some different clubs and organizations. Try to join the, the chess club instead of trying to jump on your English teacher's dong. It's crazy how this went. But we need to stop doing these stories because it's it's not doing anything except promoting it more. Yeah. Like, there's no reason because to put this people, story out there. Because how many people love Jenna Ortega? Oh, Jenna did it. I want to kind of do that for my, you know, college statements. So it's, you know. Yeah, that's another thing. People really going to be thinking that. Like, oh, this is my, I'm, I'm a boring student who didn't do any clubs. So this is my exciting thing. I mean, oh, God forbid it's something read. worse. You don't so, even try to sleep with the teacher. You try to go for the, the principal or something. Don't be trying this stuff, y'all. One thing I do want to say is whenever um, the little principal or whatever was talking to them about the occurrences that had happened, you know, the timeline of their relationship, mm -hmm. Jonathan was fucked. Like, and he knew, Mr. Miller, he knew he was fucked. That was a good job. scene. That was a good scene he when they broke knew, it down. Because they were yeah. showing them in two different seats and they were literally showing, hey, so what happened that day? Did you ever talk to her outside of school hours? Did you ever give her any um, extra treatment or, yeah. you know, special treatment? Oh, uh, you know, and every time he was, he was, you you could see Jenna was calm. She was poised because she was just saying the truth. Was what was Mr. Miller doing? Shuffling, looking scared, looking nervous. Mm -hmm. Hi, am I gonna get fired? Hi, it's not as bad as it thinks. You know, nervous chuckling. You know, it's just like 
Mr. Miller, once again, you have to, I will always put this on the adults when it comes to school. You have, cause there's a lot of sickos everywhere. Men, women, there's so many sickos that prey on kids because they are one of the three, uh, one of the three most vulnerable populations. So I, no matter what, that's why I had asked him, do you feel like Cairo is wrong in the situation? Cairo is wrong because we do know that she is capable. She has the intellect and the capability to know what she is doing is incorrect. It's wrong. Yeah. It's improper. But what I will say is I cannot fault her for majority of it because at the end of the day, you are a young, impressionable teenage girl who thinks she might actually have a shot with an actual teacher, with this grown man who's courting you, who's taking you out, sharing cigarettes. Y'all are very close. He spends more time with you than he does with his wife. And wasn't he? And remember, that day he was supposed to be out with his wife. His wife was working, and what was he doing? He was at my house. Hey, crazy. So, and then well, also, he was, yeah, he was at And y'all probably wondering, mm -hmm. where's Jenna's parents? Jenna's parents are filthy rich and out in random countries. Exactly. So, yeah. But ultimately, Miller's Girl doesn't need to be made. It's not something that I just, and the thing is, you could have done this in a different way with maybe. Mm, Actually, no, you really couldn't just because it is still promoting that toxic, authoritative figure over a younger, naive population, which is already wrong. That's giving straight up pet Yep. So you have to stop with the constant stories that this is like a romance. This is so beautiful. No, this is not a beautiful story. It was a telling story. And I guess each person got what they wanted. We'd never know what happens with Mr. Miller. Who knows? Does he get let off? Does... We don't you know, know any of that. And a lot of things, too, a lot of people aren't educated about this, but a lot of the teachers that end up, they do end up losing their jobs. Some of them do not get registered as sex offenders. Some of them kind of just, like, brush under the rug. Because, you know, a school doesn't want to be known to have a Mr. Miller in Cairo. They don't want to be known for that. Because guess what? You're going to be fucked, and the school district might even shut down your school. So yeah, we don't need to be making these. Um, Jenna, great job. Um, there's not much more to say about it. So with that being said, you're probably waiting for a waiting of the movie. We end up giving this movie an F, which means it is what? A waste of time. Absolute waste of time. Do not make these movies anymore. I never want to see these two actors in anything again. Please, please do not put them in the same movie again. Um, in the great words of Kendrick Lamar, um, Freaky ass niggas need to stay their ass inside. I'm tired of Jonathan Miller's. I'm oh, tired of. But you have to define what inside is. Because, it's, uh, yeah. mm, because <laughs> yes. that can mean. Mm. But yes. But anyways, um, as always, thank you for joining us. It's been the report card of Miller's Girl. It is Zay here with Chris. We always want you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. We will catch you guys next time. Tune in for all the other videos we got here. And uh, peace out.